How's it going on this Friday? I am fired up about the weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun to have a couple days off, get to spend a little family time, be some good stuff. I hope you're ready uh, for the weekend. That's when that's that's kind of when uh, uh, we get a chance to do some things beyond work and and really even maybe outside of your home. You'll get a chance to go out and do something fun. Uh, today we're talking about winning at life, and uh, you I mean you win at life every day, and not just on the weekends. But uh, the weekends gives you a chance to get out and flex a little and uh, have some fun. And uh, I hope you're fired up about that. I really am. Thanks for listening to the Chasing Greatness podcast here. We're, we're excited as we go forward to help you win at work, to win at home, and, and ultimately to win at life, which, again, that's that's kind of our topic today. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for downloading all that stuff. I mean, you're helping us grow. We've already seen some great stuff this week. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, continue to, to uh, hit that like and subscribe button if you would. You'll make sure you get all of our content. Yesterday, we did a little book review for you. I hope you like that. Uh, so today, we're talking about winning at life. And really, is we're just setting some stuff up this week. I've given you some stuff I think will help you as you as we've looked at uh, this week. But, but next week, we'll really even get more into the meat of this. But today, uh, I think it's really important because as we talk about winning at life, I want to give you a little bit of a framework. And I'm just going to ramble here for a second and tell you a, a little bit about how I think about my life. And I think some of these things will really resonate with areas that will be important to you. But I, I really do think it's important for us to, to define uh, what winning looks like. And and uh, honestly, not just one statement that says this is what would be winning for my life. I think that's important to, to do that. You get to do that. You get to choose uh, what you think winning looks like. One of the things I would hope you would say is that that I really want to be great in in my life. I want it, you know, I don't want to just squander my opportunity or just kind of have an average uh, mediocre life. That really is not what you're born to do. I think so many people settle for that if they're not careful. Uh, they compare themselves to everybody else rather than to their potential. And the next thing you know, uh, we become complacent. And and as as I've heard. Uh, uh, someone say one time, complacency really is our rival. And so it's it's really what we're up against. We really want to, to maximize our life. And so as I think about my life, there, there are a few areas that are really important to me. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about some of these as we go forward, but I, I think they'll help you just ask yourself what's important to you. So the first area for me that's important is just my spiritual life. It, it's my soul. I have a uh, my friend and, and mentor, Dan Webster, I've shared with you before, Dan always says, don't be writing checks with your mouth that your soul can't cash. And what he means by that is just like, you want to have a healthy soul. You want your soul, the language we've used before is to be buoyant. If you think about a, a buoy on the on the water, if you go to a lake or an ocean, you see that buoy, it, it stays up no matter how big the waves are, or how much the boats are, you know, uh, making the waves, the wake of those boats is crashing over it. It still just keeps bobbing up to the top, and that's a good way to think about your your soul. If you want to think about it that way, you ought to have this vibrant soul that is able to handle everything that's going on around it. And you know as well as I do, sometimes the stuff going on around us is kind of crazy. I mean, it's been the last couple of years. It's just been wild with the uh, with the pandemic going on, and there's there's all all kind of stuff shut down. The world's changed so much. The economy's crazy. I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff that's that's out there that we can't control. And yet we do have a choice as to whether we, we take care of our souls. And for me, I, I, you know, the spiritual side of things I, I've shared with you before. I love to read the Bible. Uh, I, if I have something that, that, you know, I can't handle, which every day there's something I can't handle. I like to go and talk to God about that. And, you know, so prayer is important. Uh, I think solitude is important. It's another good way to take care of your soul. We'll give you some of these practices later on, but but I, I just think uh, it's so important for us to have time wh where we can be quiet, we can be alone, we can think, we can process, and we can make sure that we're we're listening to the voice of truth and not just you know the the, the culture which is going to tell us all kind of stuff. Half the people are saying this, half the people are saying that. What's really right and what's really true? And uh, some of those principles that are shared uh, in the Bible to me, uh, they've stood the test of time, and so that spiritual part is important. So I would just ask you today, how are you doing spiritually? Do you, do you have uh, your, your, your philosophy kind of figured out? Do you know what you believe? Do you know who you believe in? Uh, I, I know there, you know, for me, there is a God and I'm not him. And so I think that's a really good reminder to just like, I'm not in charge. Uh, there's things I can't control, but what I can control is my attitude. I can, I can control my work ethic. There, there are some things that I can control. 
And so, and then I can try to get better in, in, in all those areas that are uh, places where I need to grow. So spiritually is really important. Here's another one, vocationally. I'm not even going to say much about that. I'll be talking about that on Mondays, what it means to win at work. But it's one of the areas of my life where I think about like, what, what d- does my work matter? Does it matter to me? Remember Monday, we talked about this. And then ultimately, it, is it something that I'm proud of? Did, it, did I put my name on that and go, you know, I, 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 I did that well and I, and I did the best I could at that. And I think it's always going to be hard to uh, hold yourself to that standard, but but man, it, it's so important. Uh, again, remember what I said the other day: a good name is more important than great riches. And so I, you know, I actually had, that's not my words; those are <laughs> those are words from the Bible. So I think they're they're uh, legit as well. So I, winning at winning at work is important, but uh, the vocational side, we'll talk about that as we go forward. I won't really say a lot about that. And then you would you would know that the next one would be my family. Yeah, that that is huge for me and. Uh, I just remind you what I said a couple of days ago. I just want to live my life in such a way that the people who really know me the best, they 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 love me the most. They really do uh, respect me. They they know that I love them. I'm sacrificing for them. I'm trying to make a way for them to score. To use some of that language we use, so I think that's important. So I'm, again, I'm not going to say a lot about that, but but there are other areas that as I begin to think about life, um, you know, what would I think about next? Well, there's a couple. Uh, but, but I I think next I would think, you know, mentally, how am I doing? And when I say mentally, you know, mentally, emotionally, I I know those don't go together, but I'm just going to kind of lump them here together for our conversation today. You know, how am I doing when it comes to my emotional health, my well being? as I think about mental, you know, mental health, it's been a big topic, uh, recently and, and rightly so it's really important, but I would, I would just say this, I, I, and I do believe that there are mental health issues i think there are broken brains i mean it's it's like people are really struggling with deep stuff but so many times uh there's some there are things we can do let's just say it that way there are things that we can do to improve our mental health the relationships we have in our life you know there, if we get into isolation we get by ourselves it doesn't take very long for us to get into a dark place and so i think it's important for us to have great relationships around us. I also think uh, it, it can help us mentally or emotionally, if you want to think about it that way, if we just have this growth mindset, if we're trying to grow. Again, I'm not I'm not a psychologist and I don't want to get into you know brain health, all that. That's not what I'm talking about here, but but just creating an environment where I can thrive. The research shows that if you're, you know, if you're reading and, and you're around the right people and you and you have uh, things in your life that you enjoy, or people, th- things that are life-giving, all of a sudden it actually improves your mental health, which is, you know, makes a lot of sense. So uh, I think there's some things that we can do there. And so I'll just ask you, I, I guess, maybe even emotionally, how are you doing emotionally today? Do you feel like that you're that you're sinking in that, you know, wake that's coming on us? I mean, the storm around us, the circumstances are hard. Do you feel like you're sinking or do you feel like that you're that you're uh, emotional health or your mental health is is buoyant? I mean, it, it really the things you can can do to control that. You're, you've got those things in place and they're life giving to you and you feel like you are not about to go under, but you actually, if you think about a buoy, the cool thing about it, or maybe even a life preserver would be better to think about it this way. That life preserver not only is going to save itself, but it actually can save someone else. And 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 it, your job is not to save someone else, but I think it's so important for us to, to, to do everything we can to take care of ourselves in such a way where the people around us who need strength, they, they know they can come to us and not in an enabled way. We don't want to enable the people around us, but we do want to be able to be strong enough for ourselves and to help the people around us who are depending on us. And, and so many of you who listen, you have people depending on you. And so I hope that's good language for you. I hope I hope you think about like what would I need to do to take care of myself to make sure I'm mentally and emotionally, you know, vibrant, but also I can encourage the people around me that, that, who are struggling. And as we know, so many people are struggling right now. So that this the, the mental side of things or, or the growth mindset side of things, uh, even the relational side of things that, that you have going on right now that, to help with that, those are so important. Uh, and then another area I would talk about is we think about winning at life here, and we'll unpack this as we go forward as well. We'll do some episodes on this and try to help you here, uh, learning a lot and trying to, uh, to grow here myself as I think about the physical side of my life. And and so, I, I you know, I can tell you this, I have been trying to take care of myself my whole life. And uh, it, it as I get older and older, I, I, I still see the importance of that. I don't think that's going to go away. You only have one body. 
your, your body really is important. What you put into it is going to have a lot to do with how you feel. You know, as you, as you start thinking about yourself physically, how you doing when it comes to your rest, how you doing when it comes to your hydration, that's a big thing they tell us, uh, your exercise, your cardio, all those kind of things. There's so many things we can do. And so as you think about a framework for your life and you think about winning at in life, uh, really, you can't you can't say you're winning at life if you're not taking care of yourself physically. And so I want to just remind you of uh, that one as well. And then we would also, uh, you know, I would I would be wrong if I didn't mention the importance of the relational side of your life. You do have your family life and, you know, you maybe you have a spouse and kids or whatever, but you do have extended family relationships. You've got work relationships that kind of bleeds over a little to our Monday discussions. Uh, you've got friendships. I hope that that you can depend on those, those are really important for you to be able to lean into. And so relationally, uh, maybe you, maybe you've got some missing pieces there, some the missing people there that you, you need really to have around you. I just man, it, it's so important to have the right people around your life. You got you got so much um, uh, that you can gain uh, and so much you can give to those relationships, but really so much you gain from those as well. And so. As you think about helping other people be great, we talk about that when we talk about chasing greatness. It's it's one thing to try to be great ourselves, but to help other people win, that's important. But you need some people around your life who are going to help you win. And I, I'll have a chance um, on Monday. I, I have a group of people I meet with every two weeks. There's there's 10 of us. And all these guys, we, we meet together. And it is amazing how life-giving that is to me every time uh, that I'm with those, those guys. It, it helps me grow, but it holds me accountable. It encourages me. We, we have community together. Uh, just I, If I have a problem or an issue or something, I know I can depend on those guys. They'll be there for me. And I hope you have some of those kind of relationships in your life as well. So uh, just just continue to do that. So those are just some of the areas that we would we would talk about here. And I don't want to leave off this last area. Uh, it really is not even about you so much as it is about uh, what you have. And, and I'll just use the word financially here. It's like, how are you doing financially? As you go into this year, um, and, and, as you, and even as you begin to think about winning at life, I, there's so much that uh, goes into this thing about our stuff. If you want to, you want to use that word. It's, it's just our resources that we have. Are we stewarding those in such a way that that again we would be um, we would be proud of that, that and, and and not just uh, that we would have more so we could have a better life. Even I mean, if you have more, I mean, you can buy more things. That's great. But sometimes uh, the more I have, the more those things have me. I like the mindset of uh, the more I have, the more I can give, not the more generous I can be. I want to be generous whether I have a lot or not. But uh, I, I love the fact that we create all these resources so we can give more away. It's a lot of fun to do that. And so <clears throat> as you think about your finances, are you uh, stewarding those in a, in a, in a way that um, really honors God as way? Well? I would, I would ask the question. I mean, it's, you know, I've been given so much. I want to make sure that I, that I uh, have a mindset of a sharer. If I'm not careful, I can, you know, money is a trap. It, it, it's, it really is a trap. And so don't, uh, don't neglect to think about your finances. It really is important. And I, in, in fact, if you read the Bible, you'll find uh, that Jesus, when you read the New Testament, you'll find Jesus talks about money more than any other subject, more than prayer, more than faith, which seems kind of crazy when you think about the Bible. But he knew that this would be a, a big area, something we would have to take care of. And uh, as, as I look at our world, you know, I'm not going to get into a, a lot of uh, stuff about our world, but I will say this: it, it just there's this widening gap between people who have and people who don't have. And uh, if you are listening to this, chances are you have a lot. And so uh, there are people all over the world who are hurting and suffering. We love helping them. That's great uh, when we have an opportunity. We have some organizations that we partner with to do that, and that, that's that's so life giving to us. But when you think about your finances, are you in a, in a place where you're feeling like things are in a mess? They're really not. You, you, you wouldn't say you're chasing greatness. You'd, you'd say, man, things are kind of off right now. We're in debt. We got, I mean, like fill in your blank. We owe, owe somebody or we're, you know, we're struggling to, you know, say no when every time we have a chance to buy something, we're, you know, we, we love to do that. Uh, I, think, I think it doesn't take very long for us to pull back and really think about what's going on. And the next thing you know, we're like, Oh man, I'm not sure I have all this stuff. I think the stuff has me. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about our finances some as we go forward too on those Fridays. So that'll be that'll be a lot of fun. So as you think about your winning at life, 
How are you doing spiritually? How are you doing vocationally in your family? Those things, again, we'll talk about those as we go forward. But even as you begin to think about how are you doing mentally and emotionally and physically and and financially, and you, I mean, you may even have other areas that you want to think about as you think about winning. You would have a list of those. We'll we'll uh, continue to help you think about some of these areas, give you some practical things you can do. But I think today it'd be great just to assess, write those areas down and to assess. You just might even ask yourself, what's working in these areas? What what's really working well? What what do I feel great about? You know, I'm chasing greatness here. What do I feel great about? Secondly, what's not working? What is what is uh, a gap area where th- this is what I say I want and and this is what is reality and there's a gap between those. Uh, you might even a- ask yourself the question, what's missing? Is there something in your in your it's not it's not just not working, but it's just missing. You don't have the tools or the or the systems or processes in your life to help those areas go. The habits, maybe if you think about your spiritual life, uh, I would just encourage you to, to think about that and give that some some uh, real uh, attention as you go into the weekend here. You have a chance to kind of pull back maybe. Spend an hour tomorrow or Sunday and and ask yourself some of these questions. And then we're going to come back next week. And on Monday, we're going to we're gonna do a, a whole episode on helping you win at home. Uh, or I'm sorry, win at work. We're going to start with that on Monday. It's first day of the week. You're going back into a new work week. Uh, we'll give you some stuff there that will help you. And then Wednesday, we'll do win at home. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun next week. And then on Friday, we'll come back and we're going to we're going to dive into one of these areas uh, to help you win at life. So hope you'll continue to share. Hit the like button, subscribe. If you need us, reach out. You can do that uh, there. Uh, if you need resources, go to leadeveryday.com. We've got our all our leadership resources there uh, collated in one place for you. That'd be great. So we'll see you guys next week. In the meantime, have a great weekend. Love you guys. Keep chasing greatness. <laughs>